Hey guys, it's Shock with DG, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some quick fixes to a lot of common mistakes that I see new and even some veteran players making. Before we get into the video though, 58.7% of you guys watching this video right now aren't subscribed. If you find this video useful and you would like to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed but still want to help me out, be sure to hit the like button and comment down below so the YouTube algorithm promotes this video to more people. Anyways though, on to my first common mistake. Starting off, I have a huge misconception, and that's that flashy movement makes you a good player. I see so many players trying to quick clean, crouch spam, and just flick to things, or whatever it is, in an attempt to impress whoever's watching them. Now, I don't think that having good movement or flashy movement is a bad thing, at least if you can pull it off, but when you can't, it comes across really cringy. All that matters is that you can get your job done in the round. If that means fragging, then go and get your kills. You don't need to get them in a super flashy way, so long as you can actually get them. The next one is a personal pet peeve of mine, and that's when people think that stats mean everything. I get questions daily where people will start their question with, Hey Shock, I'm level 167, have a 1.2 KD, and I'm plat 3. How do you think I can get better at playing Thermite? And the entire time I'm just thinking to myself, what? How do any of those stats have anything to do with getting better at playing Thermite? Now, I do think that if you're Copper or Low Bronze or whatever, that you're probably not that good at the game. But when you get to some of the higher ranks, I think that it really just doesn't matter at all. It's very important to remember that Siege is a team-based game, so if you aren't 5 stacking with good players, you aren't really going to make it that far. Take me as an example. When I switched to PC, all I cared about was my rank, so I only 5 stacked. I refused to play without 4 other people in my squad. For that reason, almost every single season I was Diamond. Now if you look as the seasons went on, that really wasn't the case. That's because I stopped caring and I primarily just solo queued. I finally decided to take it serious one season during steel wave and i easily hit champion in just over 100 games now the next season i primarily solo queued again and look where it got me high diamond not champion although i got close i didn't actually hit the highest rank as i did all of those other seasons when i five stacked now does this suddenly mean that i'm a diamond player no it doesn't it just means that i didn't care about my rank and solo queued you can even take shaiko as a good example he's one of the best players and fraggers in the entire world but he was only plat one last season do you really think that shaiko is a plat one player no, Shaiko is definitely not a plat 1 player. And this goes with a lot of pros. You'll see a lot of pros that are averaging gold or plat. It's because they just don't care about their rank and they often just solo queue. You know that those pro players are some of the best players in the entire world and they easily have the skill to hit champion. Now, this doesn't go for all pros. There are definitely pros that are, you know, very, very high champion. But you'll see that the ones that actually care about their rank and 5 stack with other pros are easily champion. Now, the others like Shaiko, who just solo queue or whatever, plat 1. The same goes for KD. If you're a support player, you aren't going to have a high KD. Simple as that. So, that ends my little rant. I just want to make it super clear that your rank, KD, or any other stat like that means absolutely nothing. Next up is DPI and in-game sensitivity. I talked about this in one of my previous guessing ranks video and I said that this person with a crazy high DPI should turn it down. Oh my god. Number one thing bro, please lower your DPI. Please, please, please. If you don't if you're on if you're on PC and you don't know what uh DPI is, it stands for dots per inch. It's the sensitivity for your for your mouse. I promise you this guy's got at least 2,000 DPI, bro. It's so fast. You can see it. Look, hold on. You can see when he goes to aim down right there, you can just tell that it's so high. And like right here, you can just see that it's so high. Oh, boy. Um, I, I will tell you automatically. This is too short of a clip to tell game sense or anything like that. <clears throat> but I will say right off the bat, if you want to become 10 times better, immediately lower your DPI. Lower it to either 400 or 800. It is the like industry standard. Automatically, you will become 10 really times better. Before the video goes on, I just want to say that this video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. It's designed to easily fit in your front pocket. Most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, carrying around old receipts and gift cards in an unorganized mess. Why have we moved from large flip phones to smartphones but still carry the same wallet? It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. If this wasn't enough to win you over yet, check out our 30,000 5 star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for your entire life. 
The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll actually let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. I'm personally using the carbon fiber version and I love it. Its sleek design is amazing. This honestly feels as good as when I went from a wired mouse to a wireless mouse. It actually makes that much of a difference. It's also made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, which is never something I had really thought about, but I love that this wallet has it. Get your very own Ridge wallet with 10% off at ridge.com slash shock and use code shock, S-H-A-W-K. That's ridge.com slash shock for 10% off. The link will be in the description. A lot of people in the comments were super upset that I was trying to tell this guy how fast his DPI should be. And they said that it's because it was like a personal setting and my opinion had, you know, no effect on what his DPI should be. And while they aren't really wrong about that, at the same time, I think that having too high of a DPI can be a problem. I see this with an overwhelming amount of plat and gold players, so my suggestion here would be to turn your DPI to around 400 or 800, and I promise over the long run, you're going to see some significant improvements. Next up, start utilizing your mic and in-game chat if you're on PC. Communication is super important and is often overlooked by a lot of players. Making a call that someone is flanking your teammate could be the deciding factor in whether or not you win or lose a game. This is just another one of those things that is super easy to start doing and will have an immediate positive result. Next up is over peaking and being too aggressive. Oftentimes, I'll see a player on attack or defense just over peak when they really didn't need to. For example, on attack if your team is up on man count and it's a 5v3, you really need to slow down, drone, and prepare for your site execute. What I see instead is someone seeing the man advantage and thinking to themselves, well, if I die, we'll still have the advantage. The problem with that is that it's oftentimes more than one player that says it to themselves. So you end up seeing the entire team rushing into the site trying to get the last few kills. Remember that the round win is always more important than padding your individual stats. So focus on winning the round, not getting the kill. Next up, remember to use your utility. You never want to be that guy who's a Jaeger main and just runs off to spawn peak without placing any of your ADSs down. This is one of those things where if you place your utility correctly, it could easily swing the advantage in your team's favor. Everyone's utility on the team matters and can affect the round significantly. That brings us to our next tip, which is time management. I see players not keeping an eye on the time way too often. Especially on attack, what the clock is at is going to change what you need to do within the round. If there's a minute left and you're on attack, you better be setting up a good execute for the site. Now if you're on defense and there's a minute left, you better be slowing down, not peeking, and preparing for that execute. The time left in a round really matters and it's very important, especially on attack, to have great time management. If you can roam clear faster on attack, that gives you more time to prepare for your execute on site, which may be the difference between winning or losing that game. And for my last tip, be sure to have a goal in mind when trying to improve. If you want to get better movement, then break that into smaller little goals. So for example, one day you'll focus on getting better at leaning and so on. It's something that I really wish I started doing when I first switched to PC a few years ago. Big goals are a lot easier to hit if you break them into smaller goals. So over time, you'll have mastered whatever it is you were trying to get better at. It's so much easier to focus and complete something that's smaller to do, rather than focusing on something much bigger. So by breaking down a big goal into smaller goals, you'll reach that big goal even faster than you had originally thought was possible. That's going to end my list of the most common mistakes that I see players making. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out my channel more than you know. Anyways though, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and thanks so much for watching. Oh, Mazzy's up here. Mazzy's up here. He's wolf. I just got support. I'm down. I can. Mazzy was wolf. Mazzy dead. Mazzy dead. Chill.